All right, so we are here playing Bless Online, a recent MMORPG to come out. Uh, it is very hyped up. It has it has a lot of upsides, a lot of downsides. Um, I know the Steam reviews are like mixed, probably something like that. Uh, but the people who play this game love this game. So you're either one of two people: you love this game, or you rather play. Video. <laughs> That's pretty much about it. Um, so I'm gonna try and give you guys a bit of a a tour into this game because it's a very hard game to get into, especially if like let's say for some reason the help chat isn't active. Like maybe people aren't helping you out and you don't know what to do. Uh, that's what this video is here for. It's gonna be level one to thirteen. What do you do, and why? Um, yeah, so let's get started. So, as you can see, I have a couple characters already, but I'm gonna make a new character uh, for the purposes of this video. Great character. Uh, I'm uh, in this faction already, so I can't choose the other faction, uh, because on this specific uh, server, I'm on Huron. But if I wanted to, I could play on a different server, and I can go to the Union. Or onion or whatever. <laughs> the onion. We're going to be playing a berserker because the berserker is the, probably the best PVE build uh, you could hope for. It has AOE damage, they're pretty tanky, so you know. Pretty solid. Um, some of the more revered classes like mage is very powerful, does a lot of damage. If you're playing with other people, highly recommend it. If you're not, um, be careful, because they're very squishy. You're going to have a hard time playing solo in dungeons, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, or you just like level so much that it doesn't even matter. Guardians are really good. They're really good for PvP and PvE. Um, in PvE, they're definitely slow, because they don't do nearly as much damage as a Berserker, since Berserkers are very AoE oriented. Guardians have things like knockdowns and uh, the tanky, you know, standard tank stuff. Rangers really good. Um, they're really good at kiting. So if you're getting, if you're in a one v one versus a ranger, and you're a berserker, you're gonna have a hard time, dude. Because these guys will wreck your face. Um, they can move really fast. They can slow down their enemies. They can, you know, root to their enemies, all kinds of crazy stuff. They're pretty good. Unfortunately, Paladins are pretty underpowered right now. Their main problem is their mana usage. Um, you will run out of mana so quickly. This class is underpowered. I do not recommend this class to anyone unless you've played this game for a really long time and decided you want to try out Paladin. Do not pick this class as your first class. Because you will hate this game. <laughs> Don't pick Paladin. That's my first piece of advice. Uh, there's four different races. Certain races can't be certain classes. For example, if you're an elf, you cannot be a berserker. And if you're a lupus, uh, you can't be a mage or a paladin. Stuff like that. The Mosku and the Habits both have all the other classes unlocked. Except for Warlock, Assassin, and Mystic. Those three classes are actually locked right now um, for early access. I don't know how long they'll be locked. Maybe they'll unlock sometime soon. Maybe not too soon. Who knows? Um, pretty hype though that they have three classes that aren't unlocked yet. Uh, the meta for these five classes that are unlocked is pretty set in stone in my opinion. If you want to go PvP, you're going to choose either Ranger, Mage, or Guardian. If you want PvE, you could choose any of those or Berserker, which I think is the best class for PvE. Um, if you want a challenge and you've already played this game, you know what you're doing, pick Paladin. If you want to. I mean, I, I, I am going to make a Paladin just so I know exactly what it's like. I haven't made a Paladin yet. Um, but, you know. <laughs> I look at help chat and people are like, is Paladin supposed to be garbage? <laughs> it's just like, 
All the time, man. Don't make a paladin. Don't do it. Okay. We're going berserker. And there's a very intense character creator. You could probably spend an hour or two in here making your character. You have presets. Um, and then you could choose not presets. We're gonna go with afro. Why not? Actually, we're gonna go with this. We're not gonna go with that. What do we want? What do we want for our guy? We'll go with... Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So there's... A couple different ways you can customize your dude. You can use these sliders. Some of the sliders, it's, it's kind of hard to tell what they do. This is bulge, as you can see. This is chest. These are arms. Uh, you can change your foot size, your leg size. You can change the nose, cheeks, eyes, forehead, whole head. And obviously, that's not the only way to customize those pieces. If you wanted to, you could go through this and customize them very specifically. Choose different eyebrows, depth, position, mouth, nose, eye, all the different colors. You know, lipstick, eyeliner, lip gloss, highlighter, scars, tattoos, freckles, beards, wrinkles. This game has it all. And then it has, you know, all of this. So you can choose general sliders. You know, and then if you really wanted to, you can tweak these very specifically to what you want. I'm not going to mess with this too much because obviously this character is just for the purposes of this video. But as you can see, um, I I didn't. I'm I'm not going to touch on it in this video because there's just too much, too much character creating. You can do a lot. Um. Yeah. And now please enter your name. Uh, for the tube. You can choose your voice. You can change the pitch. And there's like six different voices, seven different voices. <laughs> That's our voice. I've never seen anything like this. Who wants to travel with me? I've never seen anything like this. Do you have any questions for me? I've never seen anything like this. Who wants to travel with me? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So once you get into the world, this is what you'll see. Your character will be lit up. It'll tell you you can move using the WSAD or QWES. Look at that. Oh, it's so happy I moved around. Um. First thing you want to do is, as you can see, my A and my D makes me strafe left and right. If your first, if it's your first time getting into this game, it's not going to be that case. Um, if you want this to be the case, you have to press Escape, go to your interface, go to Key Settings, and then move. So. You're going to want to change strafe left to A, strafe right to D. Um, what it has for A and D, it's like, it's turning. So instead of doing this, A and D would like, it would like turn your character while it turned your uh, screen instead of strafing. So if you want strafing, WASD, standard gameplay, that's what you're going to have to do. Another thing I did personally for key settings is you're going to want to go to... Let's see, window toggle, and change crafting, let's see. So crafting, I change it to C, just because I want crafting to be on C. Um, it changes, it takes it off of like a, a mount thing that I've never ran into, and I have a level 30 character, so it's not an important bind. You should just change crafting to C. You're not gonna craft for a really long time, um, a lot of the features in this game, you won't really unlock, so don't be worried about that. Um, they lead you through all their features with quests, so you do not have to worry about like, Oh man, should I start crafting? Should I start making armor with ironsmithing? Should I start cooking? Don't worry about any of that. Um, you will unlock features as you go. Just make sure you're going through the primary quests. Looking at your quests, reading them, see what they uh, help you with. Thank you. 
So just, she just gave me a baguette. I'll press I to open my inventory. You can double click it to eat it, or you can set it to a keybind by just dragging it onto your keybind. Press F1, and you ate a baguette. Nice. Now it's going to teach me how to mount stuff. Um, so if I just drag this over here, it says attach anger tactic. Combats content uh, attach anger tactic combat stance to an empty slot in the stance chain skill tab. Okay, so what that means is see this little mount button, you click it, and as you can see, this is already mounted here, so I don't have to do that. Let's click this one and let's mount this. Okay, so now we have both of them mounted. What that means is I can switch through these in the middle of battle. Okay, and then I have to go down here. This is the important part. Make sure that you hit OK, because if you do not hit OK, this will not save. Hit OK. And then it says, in the non-chain skill tab, add fighting like, what does it say? Kill Kenny Cat's to skill to the empty slot. So we're just gonna do what it says. Go to non-chain skills, mount this to our uh, non-chain skills. Make sure you press OK. Perfect. We did it. And now it's going to say press the one key to use the chain start skill. So that is always going to be the first skill I use to chain anything in this tree on the left here. So what I just used was rapid slash and that's bound to my one key. Okay. So let's see. I'll show you what that means. I hit one. Then right here, you'll see it gives me some options. I can hit R, T, or Y. If I had T or Y unlocked, I'd be able to lead into those combos. But since I don't, I'll have to press R. So first, I'm gonna press one to my use, for using my first skill. Then I'll use R, which is my next skill. And then this skill is actually a hold down skill, which means you charge it and you can let it go or it'll let go of itself automatically after a certain amount of time. I'm gonna attack this lesser demon. Hit one, hit R, hit R. As you can see, you don't have to charge the second or the third skill, but if you do, you do more damage. And now it's telling me to use my non-chain skills. So it says recharge anger and press the four key on the action bar, fighting like Kill Kenny Cat skill. So I won't be able to use it immediately because I don't have anger. And what anger is, it's like adrenaline or Basically something that gets built up as you attack things, which means I'll have to use my abilities To build that up a bit If you can see the magenta bar right under my orange bar uh, Right here that is my anger and As you can see every time I hit something that builds up more It will go away over time um, I think after like five seconds it starts deteriorating, so make sure to keep that in mind. Okay, so the cutscene finished, and here's a guy. He's blue. There's a blue icon next to his name. That means he has a quest for me. If you don't know what your quest is, you can hit J. And it shows main quests are blue, guide quests are green, side quests, hunt quests, royal quests. You'll unlock those as you level up. Um, but right now we're doing the main quest. I'm gonna talk to this guy. Okay, and now my quest is defeat the horde of orc invaders attacking the Eltern village. These guys will keep respawning, so don't try and kill all of them, because you can't. They'll just keep respawning. As you can see, right below my mini-map, it tells me how many I've killed and how many I need. So I need to kill a total of four of these guys. Okay. You fought far better than I expected. All right. Later. So now I got to talk to Felix. If you want, if you don't know where to go, you can look at your mini map for the quest marker. Also, if you look at your quest right below the uh, the mini map, it actually gives you an arrow of which direction to go. So if I was running this way, and then I look at that little icon, this thing right here, you can see the arrow right beneath this blue uh, crest. I'd be like, oh look, I'm actually going the wrong way. So I'm going to turn around and say, okay, look, the arrow is pointing to where I'm going. The meters are lowering, so I'm going in the right direction. Perfect. 
So as you can see, I actually have two quests now. So one's the main quest, the other quest is auto run. Uh, the auto run quest is activate auto run by clicking the shoe shaped icon from the quest progress view. So you see this shoe right here, you just left click it and auto run complete. So if you're playing a berserker and you don't know how to left click because right now uh, I, I don't have a cursor, you're going to have to hold alt, your alt key. So when I hold my alt key, my cursor comes up and I don't turn the screen. But if I'm not holding alt, I don't have a cursor, I'm just going to keep turning the screen if I try and select that boot. So make sure you're hitting, holding alt, click the boot, and now you're auto running. Auto run isn't always available depending on the quest. So you're going to have to read the quest sometimes and be like, oh, okay. So as you can see right here, the auto run just sets me here. But obviously, there's nothing here. So now I have to read the quest. Okay, well, what does it say? Defeat the Slave Watcher at Rockshade Hill. Okay, and then escort the siege villagers, seized villagers one by one from Rockshade Hill to the outpost. So, okay. And then I can look on my mini-map to see where those uh, objectives are. So the blue crests show where I can complete these objectives. I made it so there's no announcer talk to me when I mess up stuff. So as you can see, there's text above me because I'm spamming this skill. It says you can't do that right now, the skill is in cooldown. Um, if you haven't messed with your settings already, your sound settings, there will be a system voice talking to you. you can't use that. And it will just say stuff like that. So I didn't like that, it didn't help me, um, so I just hit escape, go to system settings, sound settings, system voice volume zero, or you can mute system voice, either way. Now it says right click on the Turtle Lake Vigilante's costume in your inventory to wear it. Right click. It's wrong. <laughs> you could double right click it. Um, don't take everything this game says to heart because the translation is bad. Sometimes the auto run is wrong, as you can see there. It would have led me the wrong way. Okay, I'll leave now. Alright, we're heading to Hirakon. Alright. It's important because now you have to click on Hirakon. You need to find where it is. Right? But where is Hirakon? Oh, Hirakon Castle. There it is. Perfect. So you click on the symbol. And then it says, are you sure you want to transport target base Hirakon Plaza? Okay. Make sure you left click. And then you'll fly on a wyvern over there. While you're on the wyvern, you can look in your inventory and stuff. Alright, now what does it say? Drag the novice brown horse from the mount tab of the companion window to the favorite slot to register it. So it doesn't tell you what the favorite slot is. So this part's kind of confusing because it's not actually... There's no favorite slot in this window. You're going to have to drag the novice brown horse. As you can see, once I start dragging it, these boxes down here, they start, they're highlighted. So that's where you drag it. As you can see, my mount has an orange bar. It's the energy. If you hover over your mount, you can see how much energy it has precisely. Right now it has 1258 of 1320. Um, energy runs out as you go places. So the more you use your mount, the less energy it'll have. There's ways to increase its energy, and the energy also increases over time. So if you're not riding your mount for a really long time, your mount will slowly regain energy. And now we got two more uh, side quests. Make sure to do side quests early on, because they give you experience, they teach you stuff, they're useful. If you make multiple accounts on the same server, your gold is shared. So you do not start out with nine gold coins. Um, that is the money I have in between all my accounts on this server. Sometimes people will kill you. This is one of those times. Okay. Soul capture. Don't use resurrect. So now you have to find where you died. Where you died is the red death and resurrection tombstone. So go there. You can't be in battle mode when you're dead, so you're actually going to have to left click the cursor to move the screen like this. Just to let you know, if you're trying to turn the screen and you don't know how to. So since I'm in the vicinity of where I died, I can resurrect right here. 
And now you go back in and you talk to the guy. And you tell him that he killed you, and then he's like, go ahead, tell people, and you're like, yeah, I guess they won't believe me, dang. Okay, now I have to disguise myself as Imperial, Imperial Palace Guard by wearing the Imperial Palace Guard uniform. Go in your inventory, equip the armor like you have before. Equip it anyways, it's telling you if you equip armor you can no longer sell it. So you go into this palace, you can see the, um, the markings, it's kind of confusing as to where to go. Because there's nothing actually here. You can go left or right, they'll both lead you to the basement. The basement is where these markers actually are at. Unfortunately, they don't have any way of showing you that. But now it's asking us to go through this underground tunnel. Make sure you do this, because if you exit out the top, you will fail the quest. Now it's telling us to restore the energy points of the novice brown horse. So you left click on the horse, you select energy recovery. Um, this will be highlighted if you have an energy recovery item in your inventory only. If it's not highlighted, um, I know that it can be buggy sometimes, so like I said before, if there's any bugs, you can go select character, then uh, select this character, go back into the game, resets it. If you do have an item like basic dry feed in your inventory, you should be able to use energy recovery. So you click on this, click use, and we got more energy. Okay, so now we're leaving. And since I clicked create like crazy, I don't know where to go. So what do I do? Oh, I hit escape. And I look at my quest. Join Matthias at Carter University. Oh, perfect. Okay. You decided on your destination. Yep. The We're going to won't drop you until it reaches your destination. <laughs> so we go to Carter University. Um, so as you can see, when you scroll out like this, you can't see the names of everything. So make sure if you don't know where something is, like okay, let's let's scroll in a bit to see more names. Oh, okay, here's Carter University. Alright, let's go there. And as you can see the Icon is actually covered by our quest icon, so sometimes you have to scroll in a lot to select this icon specifically, which kind of sucks. Alright, so we are here. Um, one thing about this quest specifically is you're going to want to make sure you don't walk out of the area. So a lot of quests, if you walk out of the area, you will fail the quest going back all the way to the beginning. Proceed? Yes. But let's say you hit no by accident. Oh man, look, I failed the quest. And uh, you can't find a path that leads there. There's not anything you can really do. Let's look at our quests. Teacher of principles. So as you can see, there's not really any way to reset the quest. So what can you do? Well, let's go to select character. Let's log back in. Oh, look at that. Going back all the way to the beginning. Proceed? Yes. Ah, here we are. Okay. So we've reached our destination. We're supposed to buy a gathering bag and buy a pickaxe. So let's talk to the merchant. Show me what you got. Oh, look, they have a pickaxe and a gathering bag. Let's buy one and buy one. Oh, hey, look at that. We completed our quest. Now we have to collect wheat and collect iron ore. So this is the part that's not really as clear cut. Um, you're going to want to just run out, see what you can find. Iron ore and wheat are both random spawns. They could be anywhere. I actually see some iron ore from here, so we're gonna go get that real quick. And we have some wheat right here. Perfect. So just make sure you're looking around. Because like I said, this stuff span spawns randomly. Go to where the suspicious people are. So since I don't really know where the suspicious people are, since it doesn't tell me where it is, what I can do is I can left click auto run. I can stop my auto run. And now I can talk to the wyvern handler. Show me where I can go. So it shows me actually a route where the quest I selected to auto run is. So now I know exactly where I need to go. I say, I see, oh, okay. This is where the quest is. And here's the wyvern symbol. So I just go over here, click OK. Perfect. And you'll need to buy a lot of gathering bags and a lot of pickaxes if you plan on gathering all the stuff you need for crafting. I, on my uh, level 30 account, I usually carry 
100 pickaxes with me and 100 gathering bags since they're all single use. So go to your inventory, right click the hamster, right click your lesser taming order, then this bar will pop up. You have to press space bar in the green bar. If you don't do it in the recommended amount of time, you'll have to restart. So now we have the ability to tame animals. This will allow us to get more pets and more mounts. Take this, my friend. It's a teleportation stone. Teleportation stone. All right. So now we open our inventory. You see this shard. Right click it, and you'll start teleporting. And as you can see, into the rocky prison, available at level 11. So, this is the first time we'll actually have to grind something. Uh, let's look at the map right now. One place that's really good to grind is Rock Fox Outlaw's Hideout. So we're actually going to go over there right now. Okay. I actually forgot about this. Locked trade route. It's probably good to get it done. Since you're running this way anyways. This will give you experience. So now that we've killed enough... Uh, Guards for blocked trade route. We can go meet noblewoman Margaret. And we got some experience. We also got level 11. So we can go back to Hans and continue the main quest. But before we do that, we do have to go over here and get a mount. So I guess the best way to do it is just keep running down this path southeast until you find that quest. Once you complete the quest, go across this mountain. Until you find the wild dogs. And here they are. So open your inventory, right click a wild dog, get close enough to use the lesser taming order. And now you gotta do this. Hey, perfect. Now let's look at our companions. As you can see, wild dog is a mount. Perfect. Let's equip it. You can get multiple wild dogs if you'd like. And we have seven taming orders right now, so we might as well. Stay away stay away from the gang scouts, because they have a very large range. They will start hitting you, and they hurt a lot. And here's Hans. Welcome, my friend. I've heard I should have done good. Why don't we... All right, now we got to defeat the Rock Fox gang executive. This is another area where you can get uh, mounts, by the way. Let's actually do that right now. Your horse will be the fastest because it's the highest level. Uh, let's see. Horse 9.3 meters per second. Well, these are only 8.15. But these guys will get up there. They just need, need a bit of love. Let's see if we can do some nasty stuff here. Nope. We are not strong enough to take out everyone. So if this starts happening, this is probably a good idea to uh, start deciding like, oh, hmm, maybe I should, maybe I should look at my skills, see if there's anything I can change to make myself look, make myself stronger. So let's press K. Look at our abilities first. This is going to make us very much more tanky. Uh, I have 100 barrel. Barrel is spent on abilities. Rose stone is used for non-chain skills. We have 62 Sapphire. Sapphire are used to increase the power of your tactics and your attacks. Um, we also have Sapphires in our inventory. We can right click those to gain more Sapphires. As you can see, we required 108 Sapphires from the Sapphires we only had in our inventory. Um, 200 Rose Stones. Another 200 Rose Stones. So make sure you're looking at your inventory, see what you have. All right, let's try it again. So we'll sprint, grab everyone. As you can see, with the 50 vitality, we are much tankier. And we can actually survive a fight instead of just dying instantly. So if you wanted to, from this point, you could either do the main quest or you could level up in this area, which is a pretty good area. These henchmen are kind of hard at the beginning, so you might not want to train on them. Maybe try the Pumas. They're pretty easy. They're pretty fast, too. So, if you kill one of these guys, you get a hunt quest, because you're level 10 or higher. 
Now, if we open our quest log with J, we can see hunt quests. And we can see Grass Bush Puma. Okay, step one defeat eight Grass Bush Puma. That gives me 635 experience. Um, killing this, 635, 635. So, let's see what we do. Let's see what happens when we kill eight Grass Bush Puma. We killed eight Grass Bush Puma. It gave us 600 experience, and now we have. The second part of this uh, hunt quest, defeat twenty, defeat a total of 20, so we have to defeat 12 more. It gives us experience and it also gives us dungeon points, which is score given to players who explore dungeons with their allies or who remove great forces threatening the world. You can acquire the score by exploring dungeons or defeating enemies and monsters. Cool. Okay, so we've killed 20 now. Let's take a look at that quest again. Alright, so as you can see, every time you complete one of the tasks, the uh, rewarding experience becomes more and more. Now that we're on three, part three of the quest, we actually get an additional item as well. So, that means we've completely completed this. Uh, make sure to claim your reward in the top right over here. We've completed this hunt. And we got a reward for it. And we got a lot of experience, too. So, that's what hunt quests are all about. Um, unfortunately, you will have to do a bit of it. Um... Just because the main quest won't get you all the way to level 13. Uh, there's actually a level 13 requirement quest that happens like right about when you're level 12 or level 11-ish. Which is why I wanted to do this hunt while I was here. Um, so if you plan to do exactly what I did, make sure you stop here before you go back to the rocky prison. So you can effectively um, get these hunts done. I'm actually going to do another hunt right here. I'm going to take out these Puma Cubs now that I finished killing uh, the Puma hunt. Just because I think it'll get me to level 12, which might just be enough. Let's see. So, now as you can see, Into the Rocky Prison is available at level 13. Um, that's also the level you need for the dungeon. So, now that we've completed that, uh, we have to go back on the, to the hunt grind, unfortunately. So, as I suspected, I probably should have gotten one more hunt done before I went back. Uh, we'll, we'll head our way over to... Uh, this area. Uh, as you can see, we completed three hunts, which were all in the same area, and we did like the beginning of a couple other hunts. We got to the third part of Gang Fighter and the second part of Gang Executive. Um, I only killed the Gang Scout because it aggroed me. I didn't try to kill it. Uh, yeah. So that's. Uh, I get to level 13. You do all the quests, and then once there are no more quests, you do hunts. You only need to do three hunts, and like a half, three and a half hunts, I guess. You just gotta make sure you do the side quests, make sure you do the main quest, and then the other thing that helped me was the. There's a quest in here if you talk to Outlaw Caper, uh, which is pretty quick, it takes about a minute to finish. You grab this craft box, and now we have dungeon quests. So not only our main quest is in the dungeon, but we also have uh, separate dungeon quests. This is where you can actually start doing dungeons. Since you're level 13, you have access to it. Um, and there's also side quests, repair kit, using shops too. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll touch up on this stuff uh, if this video does well uh, let me know what you guys think if you guys have any more questions recommendations you can always post in the comments or you can go to my discord um i'll have a discord link underneath this video if you want to check that out i'll be much more responsive uh in there if you want to just join in ask me a question real quick i'll respond pretty quickly i usually have discord open so uh yeah Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope this helps someone out. And uh, yeah, see you on the battlefields. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe.